when I'm giving a talk, I often ask people to just close their eyes and to go to somewhere that they like the sound of. And what's really interesting to me is that people do that straight away. They don't kind of go, oh, what something? Oh, I don't know where that would be. They just go somewhere straight away. That illustrates to me how tuned in we are actually to the acoustic properties and the atmosphere of places. So you can imagine then if due to climate change or due to land use change, um, if those environments start to change in for one reason or another, the acoustic properties that are associated with those landscapes, whether that be the the birds and the animal calls that are kind of on top of that soundscape, or whether it be the reduction of foliage causing the landscape to be less or to be more reflective to sound rather than absorptive. Acoustic ecology is a really good way at looking at the transformation of, of environments over time because all these signals that are interrelated transform as the land use change. established the Listen project about three years ago now. It was established with a, a seed grant from Institute of Humanities Research and then later another seed grant from the Herberger Institute. Um, and it allowed us to establish this project which is looking at the acoustic ecology of the southwest deserts of the US. In essence what we've done is to, is to build a project where we go out and record on a regular basis and uh, we have an online database so you can go and search and listen to those recordings. But in addition to that, we run workshops in the communities. Um, we've partnered with all the national parks across the Southwest. And then we train community members to also make recordings. When we think about sustainability, when we think about the natural world, we think about, you know, an ecology and we, talk, we often talk about ecologies. Um, well, that is true for the acoustic world as well. So, Everything is talking, you know, everything's making sound in, in one way or another. There's a lot of research coming out now about plants communicating, making through sound, using sound to find water and so on. So there's, there's actually communication going on in all of the sonic spectra. So as you start to think about sound not just as a source, as a point source, a bird, a plane, a car, whatever that happens to be, but you start to think about it really as a network of communication, then you can start to understand that the interrelationships of those sounding sources, whether they be nature, whether they be animals, whether they be humans, are really interrelated and are interdependent. All of the sound recordings that we make use a technique called ambisonic recording and ambisonics uses four microphone capsules and they're set up in a tetrahedral format and, um, and through a bit of clever math we can then use that to record a full sphere of sound around the device and then furthermore when we're listening back to actually listen to particular point of view within that sound field. Now it just so happened that last year there was a company in India who wanted to get a Kickstarter project going to build ambisonic microphones into these little Zoom H2N recorders which are very easy to, to use and so we supported that um, quite substantially and meant that we got a bunch of those recorders and could just give them out into the community to these people that we train to use. And so that means that we're actually crowdsourcing in ambisonic format, which is, as far as I'm aware, the first time that's ever happened, because ambisonics is normally quite expensive to get into. <laughs> so that's going to have amazing impact, you know, in 10 years' time if we really can keep this project going, because we'll have spatial auditory data to analyse, not just a, a stereo sound image. <laughs>